Good morning. Judas was all about money. It was only a matter of time before he showed he was a murderer. Today we're looking at Mark 14, verses 3 through 11. Let's read it. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish you may do them good. But me you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Then Judas, Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. So he sought how he might conveniently betray him. So here's our story. In comes this woman having this very expensive oil, and she pours it, she opens it up and pours it on Jesus. And then they begin, to, the disciples that are with him begin to complain and moan about this. Uh, well, we could have sold that and, and used the money to feed the poor. Now, Jesus praises her because he says she's anointing him for burial. Next thing you know, Judas is betraying Jesus for money. We could gather some more about this by comparing this with some of the accounts in the other Gospels, but I've, as you might have noticed in this series, I've been sticking pretty close with the Gospel of Mark. So we're just looking at Mark really here to see what he has to say. We're going to hold the camera pretty tight here on Mark's Gospel. So I believe the one that was complaining was Judas, and I think we can infer that from verse, from verse 10, because it was immediately after Jesus' rebuke that it says, verse 10, then Judas, then Judas, Judas... And who was the one that always was chattering about money? It was Judas. And who was the one that was stealing out of the treasury? It was Judas. So Judas turns around and he's going to go and betray Jesus now to the, to the priests. Friends, when we refuse to surrender our heart to Jesus, we're really focused on self. It's inevitable. If it's not Jesus, it's us. It's self. And that means we are really murderers lying in wait. We're just waiting. If an opportunity presents itself, not if, I guess, but when. When the opportunity presents itself, we will present our hatred and our self-service to the world. And Judas does it in spades right here. We don't know ourselves well. And the heart that is focused on self and serving self, focused on wealth or what it regards as wealth, that's the heart that's very cold and is ready to turn and betray loved ones and good people. Self will always be betray others to serve itself. Now here in Judah's case, it's going to be fatal. The priests, you know, were looking. They were just looking for some way to betray Jesus. And here's Judas. Now he's going to go over, walk straight to them. Oh, this is a sad, this is a sad story. But it has instruction for us. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, help us to double check and where is our own heart. Help us to make sure that we've surrendered to you day by day. Help us so that there's nothing between ourselves and you, our Savior. Judas had not only the money issue, but Judas had other ideas, I think, about what the Messiah would be like. And Jesus disrupted that, and, and Judas just would refuse to recalibrate. Help us, Lord, to have soft hearts, soft enough to receive your gospel, to do things in a different way, to do them your way, as the Bible shows us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Thank you for your generous offers to us. Thank you, Lord, for, for guarding us to the absolute last moment, helping us, pleading with us to bring us back to your side. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Well, every now and then we need to double-check, uh, recheck our commitments, because we often find we need to surrender to God all over again. I don't know why that is, but it just is. So... Take some time if you need to and make sure your heart is right with Jesus. Have a wonderful day.